hard about living the way we do on a boat is the freedom to go wherever you want as long as it's at a slow speed <laughs> yeah, and as long as it's not dark <laughs> or raining or windy we decided to live on a narrow boat because it offered a sense of freedom and i wanted to be much closer to nature and what better way to do that than to live on a boat One of the benefits of living on an Arabo is that when you want to go on holidays, you can just go wherever you want. We do have plans to go full-time cruising around the canals of England. That is yep. the plan. We are saving. Saving like crazy. Yeah, to try to do that. And, um, and making changes to, to how we work as well so that we can still earn money whilst we're traveling around. Yeah, remotely. One of our first plans is to do the Langocklin Canal. But we've got to get there first, which will take us ages because we cruise very slowly. We, we cruise at walking pace. So if you happen to be out for a walk at the same time we're cruising, we can just have a little chat. Yep. <laughs> we moved from a apartment, which was a one bedroom apartment, even though it had a little kind of studio loft upstairs. And there's really not a lot of difference when you come home to the boat and you watch TV or you eat dinner. So we, we were fine with that transition. The thing that we really had to um, plan was the downsizing. We gave ourselves eight weeks to downsize, which was plenty of time. I think if we'd given ourselves two years, it still wouldn't have been enough time because getting rid of all that stuff when you've got an emotional attachment to it is hard. And it doesn't really get any easier because I've still got stuff in, in a storage cupboard Then every time I look at it, even though I haven't used it at all the whole time we've lived on board, I still look at it and go, I'm not getting rid of that. Might yeah. need it one day. We loaded the car up and we went to the charity shop loads of times. And we went to the um, rubbish tip with all of our less lower quality <laughs> belongings. I actually really enjoyed the process though. Towards, I definitely got into it and you just go, why do I need this? Why, why, why? Flinging things around. Yeah. This is the kitchen on our narrowboat. We have a 12 volt fridge and a gas cooker stove. There's loads of storage underneath here. It's a big, one big massive cupboard and also the side hatch, which gives great light and gets rid of all the cooking smells. This is the lounge room. We have a freestanding sofa, which came in flat packs so that we could get it on the boat. There's a heap of storage underneath, which is great. Um, we also brought in two drawer units to store all of Anna Marie's art produce for her shop. Then the, finally the most important feature of the room is the multi-fuel stove which keeps us warm during winter. One of the harder things for me was winter as a general season because we just moved on the boat. We didn't really know about how to heat the boat efficiently and so we were coming home from work, it was freezing cold, the weather dropped to kind of zero centigrade. It did, the uh, well canal the canal froze, froze. Over. yeah. Um, and the other thing is the constant worry about the cats going for a swim. One of the big differences about living on the boat that I haven't enjoyed is the shower because we fill up our water with a tap that will just be by the canal or if you have a mooring, it'll be at your mooring. And our tank holds about 500 litres. And so on one hand, you have this luxurious shower and or you can have a boat. I don't think you can have both. That's been the hardest thing for me. One of the things that has been great about moving onto the boat is how much extra time you get to spend with each other and I'm trying to make that not sound sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> we were trying to work out how to spend more time together and the boat does that because everything we do is that we move the boat together, we go into the locks together, we'll chat to each other, sometimes we have walkie talkies if we're out cruising and it's been a really lovely thing to spend more time with each other. This is the bedroom or where the cats let us sleep at night time, sometimes. We have a four foot double bed and it's on some wood 
and so we can extend it into the corridor at night time. We've got several storage cupboards underneath the bed which we made ourselves so we've got about six drawers each and then we have a long rectangle under the bed that stores kind of long term storage things like change of season, bedding and things like that. This is our bathroom. It's a walkthrough bathroom which means there are doors at either end that close to make it into a little compact room. We've got a cassette toilet which has to be emptied out manually. Uh, we have taps and a shower. When you enter our boat through the stern doors you arrive in the dinette. We actually have a double berth which is where I'm sitting at the moment. We make it into a, a dining table and a studio table and a jigsaw table. Um, during the day but if we wanted to have people stay over we could make it into a double bed. Hey! Here we are. Here we are. At the moment our boat is moored on the outskirts of London. The main reason for that is because we both have full-time jobs in London and we need to be able to get to those jobs and mooring here as well we moor in a basin which is a cut out part of the canal and the good thing about that is that we have water at the end of our pontoon yep. we have electricity and we have um, a shower complex which is kind of around the pontoon a bit when we're out on the cut or when we're out on the canal we have solar panels on the boat Yep. which do actually um, just like drip feed into the batteries to keep out things like the fridge going. Um, they're quite old so we think for our future cruising we need to make sure that they're giving us enough power. At the moment we have a toilet which gets emptied out manually by myself into a kind of big giant toilet called a Nelson Point and we would like to change that to a composting toilet which kind of has a tray of kitty litter in it <laughs> that you do your business but, in. <laughs> but to, to go into less detail, um, the composting toilet is a little <laughs> bit more um, environmentally friendly because you're not pouring chemicals in. Living in a smaller space and in a boat where you have to be aware of what you're using in terms of electricity consumption and water consumption, it really makes you kind of a bit more mindful about waste. And one of yes. the things that we really have struggled with is when you go to the supermarket and you buy your shopping and then you like, I've got all this packaging and our bin is really small now so now we've had to even change how we shop in terms of being more mindful when we're picking up products that we're going to bring in. We really like living simpler as well because obviously we've got rid of so much of our stuff which is kind of a, an emotional release yeah, if you like. freedom. Um, the freedom we're not you know, we don't spend as much money as we used to because we're not buying so much stuff. We don't live on our boat, we live on the canal. So yeah. the space is immense. What the boat does is it keeps us warm and it keeps us dry. We've had the boat for over a year and, and we've been living on it for most of that time now. I don't regret it at all no, and I'm really looking either. forward to the future and, and being able to see more of the canals and the country and all the little quaint places that are next to the canals and going exploring 